two starters healthy and ready to go. Wow. Yeah, they're going to miss Levy. He's been out for all three games. Gary Kubiak, who last year was the offensive coordinator in Baltimore before that head coach of the Houston Texans for several years. In his first year now with Denver, Jim Caldwell at Indianapolis a few years ago. Then he went to, to Baltimore and was succeeded by Kubiak there as the offensive coordinator in his second year as the head coach here in Detroit. McManus will kick off. Brandon, 10 touchbacks from his 12 kickoffs thus far. One of the best legs in the league. Denver won the toss. They have deferred. And Amir Abdullah, a rookie, he was their number two draft choice, played his college ball at Nebraska, and they hope he can really evolve and quickly as their lead running back. So the crowd is ready. Peyton will look on at first as Detroit will get the ball. And here we go from the Motor City with a touchback. And the Lions at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at their starters. Matthew Stafford, Georgia. Joy Bell, D. Wayne State. Calvin Johnson Jr., Georgia Tech. Golden Tate, Fighting Irish. Lance Moore, Toledo. Eric Ebron, North Carolina. Riley Reed, University of Iowa. Manny Ramirez, Texas Tech. Travis Swanson, University of Arkansas. Larry Warford, Kentucky. Cornelius Lucas, Kansas State. That offensive line will have to do a better job tonight than they have in the two games prior. Ramirez played at Denver over the past few seasons. And their first play is a run that loses one. Joy Bell is tackled by the safety, T.J. Ward. Matthew Stafford, you go back to 2009. He was the number one overall pick. The year before that, the Lions were 0-16. 80th career start for Stafford, who was injury-prone his first two years, but has been an Ironman over the last five. And there is DeMarcus Ware. Between he and Miller coming off those edges, and... Well, you've got coming off the edge too quickly is Von Miller. Denver's had a lot of penalties in the first two games. And even though the defense, Chris, has played Offside. well. Defense, number 58. Unimpeded to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, it's still second down. A lot of them have come on that side of the ball. Yeah, they have, but it's an aggressive bunch. And it's going to be interesting to see how they play. Will they really be willing to take on Calvin Johnson and Golden Tate? one-on-one -on -one with these cornerbacks. They are excellent on the outside, and they are excellent pass rushing off the edge. Here's the pistol, at least for the moment. And now Stafford goes back into a more conventional shotgun. He's flanked by the rookie Abdullah from behind, and he gets hit and taken down by DeMarcus Ware. So Ware and Miller, the two guys who just come in from the edges, and down goes Stafford. Well, they fooled him. They, they, they thought they were going to blitz in here, so the linemen come down, and you can't leave one of the best pass rushers in all of football unblocked on the outside, or if you do, Matthew Stafford has to understand that and get rid of the ball. You could see the tight end, Eric Ebron, he thought it was hot and turned around quickly, but Stafford just didn't get him the ball. Third sack of the season for the former Dallas Cowboy. Now on a third and 14, it's a four-man rush, and it's dumped off over the middle for a short game, Golden Tate. The ex-Seahawk makes the catch, so it's a very rapid three and out for the Lions. Not at all what the Detroit Lions were hoping for there. They really are going to have to establish some kind of a running game. Matthew Stafford last week was the leading rusher, and if he is anywhere close to that tonight, the Broncos are going to have their way. Emmanuel Sanders drops back deep. Sam Martin is the Lions punter. And Sanders collects it at the 26-yard line. Cuts it back. Former Pittsburgh Steeler brings it to the 34-yard line. And let's take a look at the Denver offense. Peyton Mann, University of Tennessee. C.J. Anderson. UC Berkeley, Demarius Thomas, Georgia Tech, Emmanuel Sanders, SMU, Owen Daniels, on Wisconsin, Virgil Green, Nevada, Tyson Brylow, Colorado State, Evan Mathis, Bama, Matt Paradis, Boise State, Louis Vasquez, Texas Tech, Brian Harris, Our Lady, Northern. Interesting to watch the Denver pace at the outset of the game. They come up in the pistol, the short shotgun. They've only used the pistol twice 
this season thus far once in each game and Manning starts that way and then throws across the middle and that's Demarius Thomas making the catch up to the 38 yard line and for years we've been watching Peyton no huddle come into the line and he does it again only Brett Favre has made more career starts 259 right now for number 18 CJ Anderson is the running back and Manning throws and it's dropped on the outside and that's Demarius Thomas covered there by Rasheen Mathis in his 13th season in the league. Now, Rasheen Mathis one of the leaders on this team he's been around for a long time but he has no fear you could see even with Demarius Thomas out there one of the great big play receivers he was just gonna hang right there and now this Detroit Lions defense that was so good a season ago is going to have to match what the Broncos are doing on defense. The Lions were number two in the league last year in defense. Only Seattle was better. Trips right, three receivers set to that side. Play clock is down to two. And Manning throws that way. And with some blocking is Jordan Norwood. And let's see where they spot this. Very close. And with the yellow line right there, a little bit short of the first down. Though Jeff Triplett may call for a measurement. The old Packers play where they're just going to block out in front, not even look for the ball. He stumbled just a little bit, did Norwood, and the knee was down clearly short of the line, I thought. There. Well, they dressed six receivers tonight, and they are short. I'll get the chain down in a second. Norwood for the moment Gary Kubiak says he's going to use all six tonight but he designated Norwood as the number three guy behind Thomas and Sanders you know and you'd think why not go for it early in the game whatever but the way they've been running the football on offense maybe not such a good uh, answer to start this one yeah neither team has run the ball well in the first two games Britton Cole quit to do the punting Last week, he was matched up in punting duties with his brother, who kicks for Kansas City. P.J. Jones. His first game ever. Yep. He was hurt last year, IR with a shoulder injury, so his first play ever. And Notre Dame are back to receive this punt. Good, deep, and angled kick, and it bounds out of bounds uh, up around the... 12-yard line. Each team with a three and out. Detroit with the ball again. Night football being brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. By Nissan, innovation that excites. By FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. And by Halo 5 Guardians, only on Xbox One, rated team. That's uh, Lions guard Manny Ramirez visiting Southwest Detroit this summer to encourage Hispanic youth and their families to stay healthy and play 60. Hispanic Heritage Month. Hola to you, partner. Thank you very much. And to everyone. To everybody. It's a good thing they yeah. do in the National Football League. From the 12-yard line, they come up in the gun with Abdullah setting in the slot. Stafford throws and it's caught up at the 19 by Calvin Johnson. Let's take a look at the Denver defense. Vance Walker, Georgia Tech. Sylvester Williams, North Carolina. Malik Jackson, Tennessee. Paul Miller, Texas A&M. Brandon Marshall, Nevada. Danny Trevathan, Kentucky. Marcus Ware, Troy. Akeem Tlaib, Kansas. T.J. Ward, Oregon. Darian Stewart, South Carolina. Chris Harris Jr., Kansas Jayhawks. They got the two guys rushing from the ends and then you get the two outstanding corners and there's the first first down of the game that is Amir Abdullah taking it for a first down up to the 23. Can't block him with five offensive linemen put six in there why not Lake and Tomlinson their number one draft pick this year they're playing him at tight end try and get the running game started just a bit and I tell you that Amir Abdullah is Something to watch. Came out his opening rush of his career. Scored about a 25-yard touchdown. Very electric player. They like him in the passing game, too. Did that in San Diego. Now you got Joy Bell as the running back. And they slot him from the 23-yard line. And pocket breaks down. And Stafford goes down. That's two sacks already. You got DeMarcus Ware and Malik Jackson both there. Danny Trevathan is going to come 
and sort of the underneath coverage here against Calvin Johnson. You say, how are you going to double him? Well, you take a linebacker underneath and protect on the backside. And then you also had Chris Harris jumping on Golden Tate. That's going to be an interesting matchup. There are some great one-on-one -on -one matchups to watch in this game. Half a sack apiece for those guys. Abdullah is the back, and now you got action here, and our referee tonight is Jeff Triplett. False start. 77 offense. Finder penalty still second down. That is Cornelius Lucas. And Cornelius Lucas is going to be the one to watch tonight. They're hoping Riley Reef can get it done one on one on the other side with Demarcus Ware. But they know right tackle is going to be the spot they're going to need some help. Uh, Von Miller. Very tough, even with chip blocks and helps from the backs and tight ends. And there's Adrian Waddle. We might see him before the night's up as well. He's coming back from a knee injury. So second down at 18, back at the 14-yard line. Look out from behind, and Stafford just has to dump it because he can feel the pressure from Demarcus Ware, who's spent the entire game and the first five and a half minutes of it anyway in the in the Lions' backfield. Wade Phillips. The defensive coordinator, man who has been around and seen it all. And there they are through the first two weeks. And we said at the very top, they owe that 2-0 and mark to that side of the ball. And Matthew Stafford's going to have to be careful here because Riley Reef that time did a decent job, tried to run him around. But when Stafford scrambles right, you create tougher angles for your tackles. On third and 18, little dump-off pass. And then getting free and coming close to picking up the first down is Theo Riddick. He's a guy who can provide a big spark, breaking tackles, needed 18. And they're going to mark it a little bit short of the first down, 17-yard pickup. You know, Riddick is the first guy. We asked Jim Caldwell, give us somebody that maybe people aren't talking about that we should be talking about. And the first name out of his mouth was Theo Riddick. He is a guy that is electric in the passing game, actually has more catches than rushes in his career. Reminded me of uh, the opener in New England this year. We said uh, to Brady, you know, who do we look for? He says, Deion Lewis. He was right. He had a big night. Second punt for Detroit. Fair catch goal for at the 22 by Emmanuel Sanders. So 8.39 to go in the opening quarter in Detroit. No score. Don't miss a second of Sunday Night Football this season with NBC Sports Live Extra. Take the game with you anywhere. Watch live on your laptop, tablet, and connected TVs. Downtown Detroit, Detroit River is there, and across the river, Canada. Windsor, Ontario on this Sunday night, back inside Ford Field from the 22. Manning sets up the screen, but the Lions are right there. Owen Daniels, Rasheen Mathis, Comes up to make the tackle. That didn't fool him. The Broncos come into the game after two games this season, ranked dead last in yards per game, yards per pass play, yards per carry. They're next to last. But Manning led them on that drive to tie the game in Kansas City, and then they won it on the fumble recovery in return a week ago Thursday. This is C.J. Anderson, his first carry of the night. About a yard, Josh Wilson up from the corner to stop him. Yeah, and what they're trying to do with this pistol is sort of a compromise position now. They put the running back right behind Peyton Manning with the idea if you offset him, it's a little predictable. You kind of know where the back's going to go. If he lines up directly behind Peyton Manning, it's a little bit of a, more of an opportunity to run either way. They're looking for answers. They're not having Peyton go under center. Maybe that's the thing that helps this offense. They try the pistol. Maybe that helps. And so far, nothing's really worked. Halfway through the first quarter. Third and 13. Manning chased out of the pocket, fires, and connects. And that's Emmanuel Sanders in amongst a trio of Lion defenders. So they connect on a third and long. Don't let Peyton Manning get his body weight moving forward. You won't think there's anything different about how he plays quarterback. He zips that one in there on a rope. That was one of the better throws we've seen. Looked like he's loading up on the fastball there. Perfect spiral from the 35-yard line. Pistol again. This time a little flip goes to Ronnie Hillman. This is his first carry of the night. Stays in bounds and is forced out very close to the first down marker. And a flag is down. So 
Like James, he had a bow. He's flying up there to make a play, and then just as Hillman was stepping out. Right in front of the Detroit bench. Here's Triplett. Now he wants to discuss this now. So you've got a little conference call going on. Who saw what? Somebody saw that and then yeah. that. Well, he was clearly out of bounds when he got that shove from ahead of all. Verdict? After the player's out of bounds, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. 15 yard penalty at the end of the play, first down. You know, Terrell Austin, this defensive coordinator, was really disappointed in how his guys let Peterson get outside of this defense a week ago, and now here they are on the edge again. This defense has been a very disciplined bunch. Of course, uh, missing in Dominican Sue off of here, and DeAndre Levy has been not in the lineup either. So they're two best players from a season ago not playing. So you go five wide here, Manning with a fast throw to Andre Caldwell, and he goes nowhere. He gets taken down. Let's take a look at the Lions' defense. Jason Jones, Eastern Michigan, Tyron Walker, Tulsa. Halting at the Oregon. Ziggy Nansa, UAU. Tyre Whitehead, Temple. Steven Tuller, North Carolina State. Josh Bonds, Auburn. Big play slate, Mississippi State. James E. Hedivo, UMass Sims. Clover Quinn. You and them low balls. Rasheen Mathis, Bethune Cookman. Glover Quinn had seven interceptions last season, and that led the NFL. The running back is Jawan Thompson, and he avoids a tackle in the backfield and then moves forward to about the 42 yard line. And that will present us with a third down and four. It's so interesting. This offensive line is almost completely new. Uh, Ryan Clady was supposed to be. The left tackle, he got hurt uh, with an injury. He's out for the year. Sambrello is the left tackle. Evan Mathis only been here about two weeks. A new starter at center. Vasquez from right tackle back to right guard. And Ryan Harris comes in to play right tackle. So this is a complete remix from a season ago. Learning on the fly. Manning spreads it out again. He goes five wide. Lions blitz, and then the pass is incomplete. You get three receivers all in the same area with defensive backs as well, and the pass is incomplete, fourth and four. Well, they were going for almost a double block here and then come underneath it, and Sanders just couldn't get quite get to the ball. Looked like somebody, one of the receivers, maybe uh, Demarius Thomas, stepped back a bit to make that block and right, got right in the path of Sanders. Look at this. Yeah, so McManus, who won the job last year and had a great season. This is going to be a 60-yard attempt if indeed he attempts it. His career long is 57, and they let the clock run all the way down. So we're going to see if they could get Detroit to jump off, and they didn't. And I think they wanted to punt anyway, and they figured they might as well get the extra five yards if Detroit accepts it. Prior to the delay of game, timeout, Detroit. Their first. It's a 30 second timeout. Well, that's interesting. I, you know, I thought Denver was just trying to get him to jump offside and punt, get the extra five yards, and Detroit winds up calling a timeout. It's entirely possible they just had some kind of a field goal block out there and were worried about some kind of a fake or whatever. So, don't want to make the big mistake there. It, it is very strange, though, isn't it, seeing this offense struggle? Mm -hmm. And Gary Kubiak, obviously, Rick Dennison under a lot of pressure, as is Peyton Manning, to get it going because what they've done over the past three years or so has just been as good as anything in the National Football League. That's Lance Moore, several years with the Saints, and into the Steelers. He's back inside the 10-yard line. Second punt coming here from Britton Colquitt. And that kick will bounce at the 8 and get down to about the 11-yard line. So the Lions are in the game again. A little less than five to go in the quarter. Nothing, nothing in Detroit. I think I can see the genealogy chart right there. That is the grandson of Vince Lombardi, Joe Lombardi, 
His father was Vince's son. Lions offensive coordinator was in New Orleans as the quarterback's coach. Uh, won a Super Bowl with Drew Brees and company a few years back. And now the OC here. This drive starting back at the 11. Their drives are started at the 20, the 11, and the 12. And that is Joy Bell, and he goes nowhere. Malik Jackson. Okay. Well, on the outside, Demarcus Ware, and when you talked about Joe Lombardi, he said this bunch is not the easiest group to get your confidence back against. And you see it throughout the course of this first quarter. Demarcus Ware has been all over stunts, running, and one of the things Matthew Stafford said this week was that Marcus Ware could run full speed under a table. I think you just saw it there. Second and ten from the 11-yard line. Fake flip, and then coming up to make that tackle after a gain of one, maybe two, T.J. Ward. Great run-stuffing safety. Great on the back end, and when he plays up near the line, he's like another linebacker. He really is, Al. That's a, that's a great call. Here he is right in here, going to step up. And as soon as that thing shows run, he is going to step up and play like a linebacker. Made a couple of Pro Bowls. He was Pro Bowler in Cleveland. They got him here in Denver, and... They think he is something special, and he is. He's been hot in this first quarter. Third down and nine. Lions have run 10 plays for 20 yards. And Stafford, this time he has time, and that is incomplete. Golden Tate could not reel in. There is a flag, though. Chris Harris covering, and the flag is all the way upfield to the 36-yard line. Yeah, I couldn't tell if Chris Harris hooked that inside arm. That's what it looked like. But I'm a long way away from it. Boy, that is some matchup. Quickness against quickness right there. Chris Harris on Golden Tate. Has interference. Defense, number 25. Ball replaced with the spot of the foul. First down. Take a look at the top of the screen there. See if Harris hooks that inside arm right there, grabs it. You see exactly what the official saw. A lot of times that happens in the league. And as a matter of fact, receivers around the league, how many times have we seen it now that they now just go, okay, I know they're going to take that one away. I'm just going to catch it with one hand. But that time Harris got caught. Yeah, let the arm go limp to make it look like it, if nothing else. It's a 23-yard penalty. So a third and long becomes a first down. Stafford playing as he moves to his right. Hits Lance Moore for a gain of five yards. Yeah, and you just wonder, would they stay away from a guy like Aqib Tlaib in this game? Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris, two of the top ten cornerbacks in the league right now. And both of those guys, obviously on the same team, have a first-round draft pick and Bradley Roby as well. So they are not afraid of man coverage, even if it is against the likes of Calvin Johnson. Second and five from the 40. Abdullah. Uh-uh, over the left side and nothing there but the right side of the Denver defensive line. Third down. Well, I tell you, they've got some run stuffers in here, too. This is a tremendous team. Watch Vance Walker, who came over from Kansas City, and he's probably one of their best run defenders, and they had good ones over there, too. So you think, all right, we can't take chances with the pass rushers off the edge. You can't go against these cornerbacks so easily, and <laughs> you can't run the football so easily either. And yeah, the fewest runs attempt in the league in the first two weeks. They've run the ball three times tonight. Now they have a third down and five. Four-man rush, and the pass is picked off at the 45-yard line. That is Bradley Roby, who takes it back to the 36. It was Roby who picked up the fumble a week ago Thursday in Kansas City and ran it into the end zone for the game-winning score. And Roby with a pick and sets Peyton up with a short field. So Denver with it when we come back. Nothing, nothing. Well, Detroit got a, a break on the penalty, getting him out of a third and long, but then they give it away. It's Roby with the pick. Sets Manning up at the Detroit 36-yard line. And coming up in the pistol, and this time he waves C.J. Anderson off to his left. Looks over the middle, crossing. To Sanders and Sanders trying to get to first down marker very close to it. We go back to the pick. That's Bradley Roby down here. He's going to have this guy, but he's going to fall back. 
as Golden Tate comes underneath. It's just a really hedgy play, just a straight zone defense, and Stafford looked at him the whole way. And Roby, one of the things that Aqib Tlaib was telling us is how many more questions Bradley Roby has been asking, how much more film study he's been doing, what a difference maker he is. He wants to be in the category with Tlaib and Chris Harris. From the 26 after a first down, Blitz coming, Manning gets it away, and making the catch, staying in bounds, C.J. Anderson turns it into a gain of about nine. He came on last year, C.J. Anderson. It looked like uh, for a while Monte Ball was going to be their guy in the future. Now he is gone. They also have Ronnie Hillman, the more of a change of pace guy. And you've got this guy, C.J. Anderson, out of the University of California, who finished with a flourish last year and won the starting job. Yeah, like 800 yards in the second half of the season and sort of the fantasy football darling going into the season, but it didn't start so well. Second and one now from the 17. And swinging to the outside and finding the open spot to pick up the first down is C.J. Anderson, first down at the 13 with a minute to go. Yeah, and you know, this pistol thing looks okay, doesn't it? I mean, it, it leaves Peyton Manning in the shotgun and not under center where I didn't think he ever looked comfortable. I know for Gary Kubiak, it's something that he wanted to try, uh, but Peyton gave Kubiak a lot of credit. He said, hey, in the first two games when it wasn't working, He's told Peyton, he goes, hey, let's go win the game. Go get in a shotgun, do your thing. And looks like they're going to be committed to that here tonight. From the 13, the pistol again. And through the middle, but really nothing happening there. Tackle made by Tapp. And Anderson is still down on the artificial turf. That was a mm. huge hit by Daryl Tapp. You're going to see right on the tail end of this thing right here, Daryl Tapp's going to lower that shoulder and almost look like banged helmet to helmet. Mm. Pretty close. Anderson's still down. Injury timeout. Well, there is Anderson. He was able to walk off under his own power, but they apparently going to take him back and check him out. Uh, and then the clock is wound as the players come back out onto the field. They'll change ends of the field as Manning goes over things on the sideline. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter in Detroit. Broncos nothing. Lions nothing on Sunday Night Football. And back in Detroit, aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. As you look at downtown Detroit, across the river, Windsor, Ontario, Ford Field, downtown. America Park, home of the Tigers, adjoins it on this first Sunday night of fall. So second down and ten as play resumes. Ronnie Hillman is the back from the 13-yard line. Fake the Hillman. Up in the air, deflected, picked at the 10-yard line. Lover Quinn, league leader last year in interceptions with seven, and that's Halote Nata, the former Baltimore Raven who deflected it into Quinn's hands. Exactly what they needed out of the big guy right there. Halote Nata is going to tip this one up, and Glover Quinn already has a pick six this season, and the game against San Diego comes right back with number two, had seven a year ago and he is the leader let's make sure he made the catch hey point of that ball definitely touched the ground every turnover gets reviewed regardless so they'll look at this didn't look like it moved a whole lot mm -mm. doesn't matter if the tip of the ball hits if he has control i think they might give that one i do too i'm you know the we are reviewing the previous play. I don't think the ground helped him control it. I think it stands. We'll see when we come back. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. An interception. First down, Detroit. Very close, but it's almost, it's almost like he got it with his wrists. Yeah, the old Bird Emanuel rule, right? Well, the old one, right. As long as 
you have control. The tip of the ball can hit the ground, and I didn't think that ball ever moved an inch. He almost locked it in with his wrist and forearm. So each team with a turnover towards Denver's first scoring opportunity, and they give the ball off to the rookie out of Nebraska, Amir Abdullah, for a gain of five. Glover Quinn certainly is the, the quiet leader of this bunch. Uh, asking Terrell Austin, I said, all right, when they're sick of listening to you, who is it that they'll pay attention to? And Glover Quinn and Rasheen Mathis, the two that he said. But for Peyton Manning, they continue to have issues. They cannot get that play action game going. They just have not run it well enough to get the play action passing going. And it's really hurting this offense. Kubiak knows a lot about Quinn. He played for him in Houston. And catch is made at the 20 yard line. Eric Ebron, the tight end, and that's enough for a first down. He was their number one draft choice, was Ebron out of University of North Carolina. Their other tight end is hurt, that is Brandon Pettigrew, and this guy could make a big, big difference. Two touchdowns already this season. On That's his 10th reception. Yeah, and he, he wasn't so good last year. He dropped the first pass this year. But clearly, when they're yeah. having trouble pass protecting, those quick throws to the tight ends and backs are a good option. And now through the middle and running into his own man, but maintaining his balance, and then the ball is out. The ball is out. Abdullah, who had a lot of fumbling issues at Nebraska, and he fumbles here. Has it stripped away, and it's Darian Stewart, the safety, who takes it away for the Broncos. Well, his reputation for fumbling clear in college, 23 fumbles in college, and it looked like he lands on top of Stewart here, who then rips the ball out. And we got one of those situations, when does the backside hit one more time? The mm -hmm. ball clearly comes out. He's down there, we can't see it through Trevathan on that one. Like last week, is the butt down before the ball comes out? That's the question. And again, every takeaway gets reviewed to begin with, so they're looking at this in New York. Boy, that is close. We're keeping them busy in New York tonight. Mm -hmm. Darian Stewart came over from the Ravens and had an opening day game-winning interception against the Ravens, so he's off to a good start. So the line of scrimmage is going to be the Detroit 26, and we'll see who has the ball. Talk to Jim Caldwell. We're reviewing the previous play. Once again, triplet under the hood. Now we think Detroit's going to keep the ball because uh, he's down before he loses the ball. Sunday Night Football, home of the butt fumble, huh? And the butt cam. This is all we've been doing the first couple of weeks. Here's Triplet. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The runner is down at the 26 and a half with possession of the football. It'll be second down, Detroit. Well, we had a rear end tonight. We had a body part last week, and next week we'll have a derriere or a posterior. Take right. your pick. I'll tell you, Jim Caldwell, he has to be a little bit nervous now about Amir Abdullah, all those fumbles in college, and we asked him about it, and he started knocking on the table in front of him. He knows it's sort of one of those tick, 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 waiting for it to happen, and he's out now. Joyke Bell is the running back. Come up with a fullback in this set here. It's Mike Curtin. And quick flip to the right side. That's Johnson. He cannot avoid the grasp of Khalid, but he only needed four, and he got five, and it's a first down. Uh, and when they see this man coverage on the outside, I mean, there's nobody else around. They're just going to take their chances and feel like that the great Calvin Johnson is going to get away. But sometimes in a game, Al, I can tell you that just getting the football in your hands and sort of getting into the game is a, is a good thing for a wide receiver. And I think that was a chance just for Calvin to get his hands on the ball and get started. And trying to bust up the play is Miller, but he's able to slow him down. And the tackle made there on Abdullah, so it'll be second down and long. Well, you can forget about Eric Ebron handling Von Miller. This, this design probably just not ever going to work. 
Jumps right around, and he was by him so fast, the fullback, Burton, didn't even have a chance to look at him. i tell you, that Von Miller is one of the very best players at any position in the National Football League. They put a fullback on the wing, tighten it up up front because of that pressure. And Stafford this time with a clean pocket, but all he can do is throw it to the outside, and Abdullah gets tripped up. And for a very short gain up at the 34-yard line, Danny Trevathan was there to make the tackle. Third and nine. You know, Al, one of the things that we've seen about is that the Lions don't want to get into small ball again like they did last week, right? I mean, Calvin Johnson is one of those guys that if you just throw it down the field occasionally, he's going to make some plays for you. And they really feel strongly that they have to get back to that. And we just haven't seen it. Maybe it's the pressure, I'm not sure. But we haven't seen those. Let's just take a shot at letting him make a play. And let's see if we see one here on third down and nine. Well, you got help over the top here, though, on third down, right? Here comes the blitz. Stafford has to swing to his left, throw against the grain, intended for Abdullah, fourth down. So they can't take advantage of the reversal of the call and have to punt. So when you get to third down and long, of course, you're going to get help. You're going to get two guys, and so they're going to try and take away that jump ball. But that was a big play in the making right there that Matthew Stafford just missed. Sam Martin's third punt of the night. Sanders is back. This is a beauty. He's close to the fair catch and lets it bound into the end zone. Gary Kubiak as the head coach in Houston, then last year offensive coordinator in Baltimore. He loves to run. He does not like the shotgun. He used it only a third of the time over those years. And as you can see, last year with Joe Flacco at quarterback, all the other teams in the league used it on pass plays. 60% of the time. Now this year, entering tonight, of course, he's using it 80% of the time. That counts the pistol, which is the short shotgun. But, you know, you can be stubborn or you can be smart. And I give Gary, I put him in the latter category. Yeah, and it's been neither fish nor foul here for the last few games. I think it's somewhere between Peyton and Gary's offense. Here's Ronnie Hillman going nowhere. You know, it's funny, so last night, meeting with the, the visiting team as we do the day before the game, into the room walks Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> and it was he walks and he goes we're just looking for our first one of the year <laughs> of i mean i've never seen two a two and oh team getting more heat than this one I said, what is this another direct tv commercial you got the character going but he is truly an entertaining guy anytime he shows up in the room even when he's under siege he definitely always has a sense of humor about him and we enjoyed the conversation second and 13. And Manning over the middle hits Sanders. He gets to the 23, seven yards short of the first. Tullock, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. And we've been talking about offensive linemen, and Tyson Brilo right out here on the outside, number 74, is the guy that is really going to be under pressure tonight. The only guy for the Detroit Lions that is active tonight that has a sack is Ziggy Ansah over there. But Sam Brilo is a guy that was not expected to play. That was supposed to be Ryan Clady. He was supposed to be the right tackle, but he was forced into duty on the left. A very tough position. Third down, seven. And Manning throws, and that's going to be a first down that is caught by Demarius Thomas. Some question about whether they'd be able to sign him in the offseason. They did do a very lucrative contract, but they did lose Julius Thomas to Jacksonville. I like Calvin Johnson. He uses his size and physical nature to sort of sling defensive backs around. A very tough cover. And one of the things we're seeing tonight out of the Broncos is that they're moving their wide receivers in tight. I think they want some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups. They don't always want to have their two stars, Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas, flank why get them in there give them some two-way goes and pass is caught and that is Owen Daniels short gain we go to Michelle well you saw CJ Anderson go back to the locker room he is being evaluated for a concussion I'll point out that he had a concussion last preseason 2014 so this is the second that we know of 
And as long as he remains in that locker room, you get more concerned. Remember, if he has a concussion, he cannot return to the field, Al. Exactly. Thank you, Michelle. So the protocol in effect right now. So they've got Hillman, and the other back is Thompson. Second and seven. They hand off, and then the pass is caught, and taking it to midfield is Benny Fowler. First year receiver out of Michigan State. And down on the field is Josh Wilson, the Lions cornerback. So Wilson will need some attention here. It's, we stop the clock at 8.20 to the half. So walking off the field gingerly is Josh Wilson. And we can take a look at that Denver offensive line. That's what it was last year, final eight games plus the playoff. Of course, Clady got hurt this season in, well, before training camp in OTAs. Now you get a rookie at left tackle. Mathis comes from Philly. Paradis has only made three career starts. Vasquez has been there a while, so he's the veteran. And Ryan Harris, pretty inexperienced. So that is what you have going on up front in front of Manning. Yeah, and it's not that they can't play. Uh, you know, and unfortunately here we've got Josh Wilson, but they just haven't played together. They signed Evan Mathis, who's been one of the top guards in all of football over the past three or four years. Uh, Paradis, they like inside. Vasquez, good moving back to guard. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a bunch that could get good, but they just haven't had enough time together yet. So the last play was that 13-yard pass to Fowler for the first down. Now Manning on the Detroit side of the field. Good clean pocket pass. And the traffic is incomplete. That's Owen Daniels, former Raven. Of course, he played under Kubiak there last year in complete second down. Juan Thompson in as the back now is going to step up, make a nice block. But watch this. This is good pass protection. This is a play you got to hit. That's plenty of time to get something da done down the field. It wasn't a weak pass. It was just great coverage by Hedebo. Second down, 10. Eight minutes to go in the first half. No score. Draw. And Thompson bangs his way to the 42-yard line. Tullock makes the tackle, and it will be third down and three. Yeah, Juwan Thompson getting his first carries of the season. He's a guy that John Elway discovered while Peyton Manning was over at Duke and David Cutcliffe camps that they used to go to and get a little workout in and he was one of the kids just working out from Duke. Liked him so much ends up on the team. Well, of course when Elway was the quarterback there for so many years, Kubiak was his long time backup. Third and four. Manning guns it over the middle and it's caught at the 31 yard line. That's Benny Fowler. So we talked about six receivers dressing tonight. Kubiak says I'm going to use them all and he means it. That's Fowler's second grab. Here's what we were talking about earlier. Watch this now. And Sambrilo is going to run Ziggy Ansa, the best passer, just around. So Peyton drops back, gets that depth, but then steps up around and helps his tackle and has plenty of time to make that big third down completion. Peyton looks more comfortable to me tonight in the shotgun than he has so far this year under center. Definitely. Ball now at the 30-yard line. Ronnie Hillman to the 28-yard line. You know, you saw John Elway. Of course, you, you can't end a career any better than the end of John's career after so much frustration getting to the Super Bowl but not winning it. He wins two in a row and walks off into a Rocky Mountain sunset and that's that's what he wants to happen to Peyton. Yeah, I mean there's no way that he couldn't have been influenced by the way his career ended. Terrell Davis yeah. let's run the football take pressure off the quarterback it worked for him and he certainly wants it to work for Peyton Manning. No question second down and eight. Manning comes back this way and staying on his feet staying in bounds and tackled inside the five is Virgil Green. Tulloch saves the touchdown, and that makes it first down and goal. You know what's interesting is Virgil Green actually had a faster time 
at the Combine than did Julius Thomas, who, of course, is playing for Jacksonville now. And I think he's always been a little frustrated that he never really got a chance to be the receiver. He was always considered the blocker. And he said, you give me a chance to do this, I can make some plays for you, and he certainly did there. So Manning now 13 to 17 for 115 yards. You have Thompson as the fullback. You have Hillman as the running back. And this is Thompson taking the ball inside the one yard line. Ticking down to five minutes to go and half second down and go. And Thompson needs a, an injury timeout here. So with Anderson back in the locker room and Thompson on one knee, you're down to Hillman, period. Yeah, and Travis Lewis is the one I think that hit him. Well, we might see a lot of spread formation here coming up. But once again, drops his head, and we know how dangerous that is for every player inside the tackle box. Not a foul. But that is two, and we haven't even played a half of football yet. And we've dressed... Dress three backs. Let's go to Michelle. Well, C.J. Anderson is back on the football field on the sidelines. He has been clear through that concussion protocol and is probable out. And that's very good news, obviously, right now for Denver, especially considering the fact that Thompson needs assistance coming off the field. you got Hillman in the backfield at second down and goal. Hillman. Into the end zone, Ronnie Hillman. And there's a flag down at the six yard line. And a conference. Jeff Triplett, referee. After the score. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 94 in the defense. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Ziggy answers, so assessed on the kickoff. We played 25 minutes and six seconds, and we finally have some points on the scoreboard. Now, this is the way it's supposed to look up front. You've got your center, young center, and Evan Mathis, the veteran. They worked that combination block perfectly that time. I'm telling you, sometimes it just takes time for these offensive linemen to figure out how to work together. And even Luis Vasquez, who has been playing that position before, and then you see Ziggy Ansa taking it or giving it, and then nice job by Harris just standing there and not retaliating and getting the 15 yards. Great coordination up front. Boy, that one had to feel good for oh. the Denver Broncos. It has been a long time. Well, they did one against Kansas City to win it, but that one was pretty methodical. Little run pass mix, too. The 33 yard extra point is good by McManus. So they had the ball six and a half minutes, 80 yards, 12 plays. Denver leads seven to nothing. Well, on Tuesday night, Bob Costas is going to go to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, an NBC sports event special. Lightning and the Penguins face off in the rink that was featured in the iconic film Slapshot, home of the Johnstown Jets a million years ago of the Eastern Hockey League. Of course, we are in Hockey Town. And that means the statue of Gordie Howe. And we'll go back to Ted Lindsay. As a hockey maven yourself, Chris, you do know all about Pucks. Especially at the Olympics. Right. I see more of it there than you do. <laughs> Calvin Johnson comes out. Of course, he'll be 30 years old on Tuesday, so he's going to have the boys over for a little celebration. Yeah, it was interesting to talk with him. He said, I said, when did you first know you were different physically than anybody else? And he said, I didn't hit my growth spurt until like eighth or ninth grade, and I was kind of clumsy and <laughs> not very athletic at all, but then sort of by my junior, senior year, started coming together. So teammate Roy Williams, the defensive back, gave him the nickname Megatron. He loves it, so the fans. And that pass is caught. Speaking of Mr. Johnson, turning around, adjusting on the play, up to the 45-yard line. Tackled by Talib. What a catch that was. I don't think Akeem Talib could believe he didn't make this interception. It's coming right to him. And Calvin Johnson just flipped around and made this catch. Watch this. And then strong enough hands to sort of wrestle it away from Talib. That was tremendous. 
Up to the 45. Longest game of the night for the Lions. First time Stafford's completed a pass more than 20 yards from the line of scrimmage in three games, and that's caught by Johnson. So we get Johnson into the game. A flag is thrown back at the 39 yard line. Stafford indicates to his bench it's going to be against Denver. Personal foul, Rapid the passer. Number 58, defense. 15 yards out of the end of the play. First down. Indeed it is, and that's Vaughn Miller. Vaughn Miller is going to make the inside move against Waddle. And Miller is going to try and block this pass, and then his hand naturally, as it often does, comes down on the head. But this is one of those plays now that Matthew Stafford, any time that he sees that one-on-one -on -one look, even if he has a run play called at the line of scrimmage, they're going to kill that play to the pass right, to right. Calvin Johnson. Worked perfectly that time. Under four minutes to go to the halftime as the pass is caught on the outside by Golden Tate, tackled there by... Chris Harris. Before turning 30 years old, most receiving yards, Randy Moss would head that list at 10,700. Larry Fitzgerald is right there for the red hot Arizona Cardinals. And, uh, well, what would he need? He'd need 127 yards more tonight. That is a good list. Yeah. So Randy Moss biting his nails, no doubt. Second down and seven. <laughs> from the 29-yard line. And Stafford throws, and he's under pressure that time, and passes incomplete as he goes down. Sylvester Williams put the heat on third down and seven for Detroit. One of the problems, you try and double-team the outside. Got a double-team out here on Von Miller. There that is. Got a double-team on the other side on... Marcus Ware going to help out there. And so what happens? Your center ends up one-on-one -on -one against Sylvester Williams inside, and he gets the pressure. So that's really the magical part of this defensive line and pass rush is they can get the pressure outside and certainly inside with the likes of several of those guys. Third and seven, and Stafford has time, and Johnson makes the catch. Great grab, Johnson, just before he goes out of bounds. So this has been his drive first down. And Calvin Johnson's going to get that knee in, of course. One knee equals two feet, all that stuff we learned from John Madden over the years. See if that knee drops in. Clean catch, I thought. There's the knee down, and it's over. He got the other foot anyway. Calvin Johnson getting hot now. From the 17. Abdullah. Met. Drop Sylvester Williams, the big 313-pound nose tackle, second down. Now, there were a lot of questions about Sylvester Williams. Terrence Knight and Pot Rose, the big favorite around the Denver Broncos, was, and here he is right here. Could Sylvester Williams step up and allow this team to play the way that they did with Terrence Knight? And so far in this drive, it's been his best. He's played well. Second down and 12. Going to take us to the two-minute warning, and there it is. It's underway. The supermoon lunar eclipse on a clear night in Detroit. Stay tuned for the Toyota Halftime Big Wins. The Eagles and the Colts each get off the schneid. The Bengals are 3-0. A.J. Green, another fabulous day. Bob Costas, Heinz Ward. Weigh in on the first half here at the two minute warning. It's second down and 12 for Detroit. And they go five wide. <laughs> Over the middle and is caught by Theo Riddick to set up a first down and goal. What a move by Theo Riddick. First of all, watch the way Matthew Stafford made the catch one hand it against his cap and then Theo Riddick as he is done he is almost impossible to cover coming off the line of scrimmage very quick move there get the ball down to the two Riddick third year at a Notre Dame drafted in the sixth round played receiver there he was in the slot a lot come up with Bell and a fullback Burton Stafford, before he gets tackled, is going to throw that away. 
Brandon Marshall, who was in coverage on the last play, is the guy who put the heat on. It'll be second down and goal. Yeah. Brandon Marshall really had a shot at Stafford coming through here, but he hesitated, thinking the ball might be handed off, and just picked the wrong guy. So at the two, it's second down and goal. 71 seconds left in the half. A couple of sacks and four knockdowns tonight. In the one on one you want at the top if you want them. Well, they just did get the snap off, and then you got a pass that's incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Johnson and Tlaib, and that's an all star matchup, and they're going to call that one on Tlaib, which is going to make it first down and goal from the one. Pass interference, defense number 21. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one yard line. First and goal. Now, Wade Phillips isn't stupid. He knows that Matthew Stafford is going to see this, and he doesn't care. Nobody's been playing so better so far than Akeem to leave. He, I think he kind of got caught when he wrapped his arms around him early, but he knocked that ball out of his hands. They feel like that matchup is okay for Denver. They get it again. Yeah, to leave has to give away four inches. Running back is Bell. And he dives into the end zone. Touchdown. Ball might be out. But the ball, the no, ball they call it a touchdown. They call it a touchdown. If he has possession as he reaches the goal line, it'll be good. So for the moment, a touchdown. Looked like the ball came out on the way down, but watching the officials, I thought he threw his arms in the air. Let's see if he crosses the plane, just has to reach the front edge. There it is. Yep. That's a touchdown. Right. Just the nose of the ball reaches the front edge of the goal line, and that's the end of the play, no matter what happens after that. Scoring plays reviewed. They'll confirm it in Gotham. The correct call. So with a minute and three, the Lions in desperate need of a drive. 80 yards, nine plays. Manning's going to get the ball with a minute and three. Then all timeouts. Touchdown is confirmed. Matt Prater, who can over Denver, and he has the extra yeah, point. Score. And you can score on this play under the new rule. And now you got Chris Harris. If he goes all the way to the end zone, which he won't, but he almost did. It would have been a pair of points. Eric Ebron knocks him out of bounds. That's a new rule. You block it, run it all the way in. It's an extra it's two points for you instead of seven to six. The point after is no point. Sunday night football being brought to you by Verizon. Watch live primetime games with NFL Mobile only on Verizon. By Chevrolet, find new roads. By Corona, inviting you to find your beach. And by McDonald's, teaming up with the NFL like never before. And speaking of Chevrolet, the Bolt, the Impala, and the Malibu are all built at the Detroit Hamtramck Assembly Plant. And they plan in North America building multiple cars. And outside the Motown, operating since 1985. So Tlaib, who has one punt block in his career, now has an extra point block. And with Harris running it down the field, it could have been nine to six, but he was tackled before he could get to the end zone by Eric Ebron, who was shaken up on the play. Miller going over the pictures, and it's a touchback here. So with a minute and three, and Denver leading by one, here comes Manning, and we go back to the block extra point. Deep to leave is going to come around the edge. There's two that Ebron has to try and block. You try and get one arm on each of them. He misses to leave. And then it was off to the races there. <laughs> it's amazing, though, that Tlaib was telling us last night the biggest moment of his sporting career was blocking an extra point in high school. Ebron <laughs> saved the day since he gave up the, the block. But his biggest play ever was blocking an extra point to send him to the state playoffs. He said, I was the hero. <laughs> he loved that story. I love that you said, tell me something you did years ago. And the pass is dropped here by Thomas, Demarius Thomas, who's been pretty silent. We go to Michelle. Well, Matt Prater, Al, told me before the game that he had food poisoning last night and still felt just awful this evening. 
He was hoping to keep field goal attempts in the low 50s. I'm certain he didn't see that one coming no, on the and, point after. Yeah, and Michelle, he's a guy who obviously played with the Broncos. Then he was suspended at the beginning of last year, lost That's his right. job, and McManus came in. And that's how Prater wound up in Detroit. Meanwhile, C.J. Anderson is back in the game. Second down and 10. And Manning throws, and that is caught. And fighting for a first down is Benny Fowler, who's caught three balls now. And Manning says, give me a timeout. With 40, well, the clock still runs, but they'll put a couple back on it. Timeout. They put a couple of seconds back on the clock, so you're at 48 now. It's first down. For the Broncos at the 31 yard line. Good. Manning, good protection. Thomas makes the catch up to the 45 yard line. Manning wants him to get up there, try to maybe save a timeout if he can and spike it, but a lot of time coming off the clock here. And Denver has two timeouts, so you're down to 27 on the snap. And the pass is a floater, and trying to get out of bounds is Daniels, but he did not, and they have to take the time out here. Daniels tackled inbounds, 21 seconds, so a lot of wasted seconds there before they can take the time out. Don't forget to check it out this Thursday night on NBC, the return of Blacklist. This is the season premiere. You've got Red and Liz on the run from the FBI. When Blacklist returns this Thursday night, right after Heroes Reborn on NBC. Joe Lewis Arena. Of course, Joe Lewis, uh, part of the Detroit sports history. A lot of history in Detroit. Yeah, and Brandon McManus sport, yeah. Yeah, right on the edge now of his field goal range. Already has 57, 56, and 54 yarders this year. Second and one. Denver with one timeout. Manning oh. throws. Ooh. And incomplete. Threw it behind Owen Daniels. Only took three seconds. Is 18 on the clock. It'll be third and one. Yeah, they're not fooling around anymore. They're starting to bring a little pressure on Peyton Manning this time out of the secondary. One of the things that they've had some success with blitzing Peyton Manning was sort of a delayed or second level blitz and they came after him here. But this is a big four or five yards and I'm going to imagine that Peyton's going to make sure he gets that first. Well, it's also third down. Right. So they went to fourth down and they wanted to try a field goal to be about 63 yards. And Manning will throw, juggle. Almost intercepted. Emmanuel Sanders doing a juggling act, and that stops the clock. Now you've got a fourth down and one. You still have the timeout. He's Abdul Kadus is the one that knocked that ball out of there, and very fortunate. Kind of an interesting situation here. You want to take a shot at this long field goal, but you don't want to, with 13 seconds on the clock, give them a chance to have Calvin Johnson run down in the end zone and throw one and let him go up and catch it. So that was a big miss, not completing that one. They've got to get the first down, otherwise it belongs to Detroit. And then Detroit gets charged with a timeout because they had an injury inside of two minutes. So they're charged with it. Kubiak able to go over a couple of things with Peyton Manning. Celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. Visit NFL.com slash Hispanic Heritage. With stories about Hispanic pride and culture from around the NFL. Downtown Detroit. Very nice weekend here in the Motor City. Always nice, of course, under the roof of Ford Field. And I just throw this out here. You don't want to take a sack in this situation because then basically you kind of set up at least the potential for a long field goal the other way. So Manning flanked with C.J. Anderson. Lyon showing blitz. They're coming. And Manning's going to go for everything. And it's caught. And Thomas will take it into the end zone. 
Wow! Fourth and one with all of what was going on. Flag is on the play at the two-yard line. So deep downfield, Darius Slay with the coverage on the play. That's 45 yards on a fourth and one. Pending the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Taunting, number 88 of the offense. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, that's one of those rare, rare times when it's not going to matter, but still taunting. He goes into the end zone, and the crowd is stunned. And we are, too. Well, Darius Slay obviously thought they were going to try and run some kind of a slant or something inside to pick up just enough yards to try the field goal, and Peyton Manning had another idea. He was going to take a shot down the field, and so much for all those I can't throw it over 20 yards kind of things. You'll see Slay. He sees the short set and just hesitates, and now you got problems, just like with Calvin Johnson. That guy is a big rebounder, and there was no help back there because the Lions brought a blitz. Slay was saying this week in interviews if he picks Peyton off in the game. Detroit is elected to take the 15-yard penalty on the try. So they're going to they have the option of letting instead of on the kickoff, which would hardly matter, they're going to make them kick what amounts to a uh, 38, 48 yard extra point. Yeah, and, and su substantial for them because they missed their extra point, right? Right. We're talking about Slay. Slay was going to Slay said if he picks Manning off, he's going to take the ball over to him with a pen and have him autograph it. You think Peyton will take it back the other way? Oh, oh boy. Peyton reads all that stuff. Oh, yes, know. he does. So this is a 48-yard extra point in a conference. You ever seen one of these? That's correction on the, <laughs> on the previous announcement. Okay. Since the foul occurred on a touchdown, we can't bank that foul. We can't enforce that foul on the try. It will be enforced on the kickoff. Yeah, that's what we thought because that was the end. We had the same thing before. Right. We even asked the question. Right. Could they the have question. moved it up to the one yard line and right. gone for two? And the answer was no. On the touchdown, you have to do it on the kickoff. So right, you can only, you, you can only have it enforced if you line up to go for the two points. Clear as mud. Oh yeah, but of course, section forty-seven, subchapter twelve. Column B3. There is nobody in the country who, un well, maybe Dean Blandino does. <laughs> that is, that's, a, that's about it. 14 to 6. Back to the TD. Well, you see what happens. They're going to come with a blitz. I think it's off of this side right here. And so it just creates those one on one situations. They drop the two ends out, thinking they were going to run slants. And really, it's on Darius Slay to bit stay back and not give up the big one there. The fooler was the guys dropping underneath it, so there was no reason for him to react to any sort of slant move at all. But that is what we have seen many, many times out of Demarius Thomas. And finally, the big plays are back for the Denver Broncos. So we had no scoring in the game until about five minutes remained in the half, and they were in the numbers for the two guys. Manning with the two long drives and Stafford with the one. Peyton has not hit the ground. He was sacked seven times in those first two games. He was sacked only 17 times all of last season, about once a game. Tonight, good protection, gave him time. Demarius Thomas with the touchdown, and Denver's going to get the ball when the second half starts. Yeah, and Peyton said, hey, I'm honest with our coaching staff. If there's a throw I don't think I can make, and I'm not 25 years old anymore, I get that. He said, if they have something that I don't think I can throw it that far, he says, I go over and tell him, I might have to hit the cutoff man on that one. <laughs> and he knows, you know. He's like, okay, some I can, some I can't these days. And obviously that was what he could. She put in some hook and ladders, you know. That's, mm -hmm. There's your cutoff man. And there is your touchback. Despite the fact you had to kick it from 15 yards farther back. So Detroit, one play from the 20-yard line. I'll take the semi story of this half. I know people are going to want to talk about Peyton Manning and he's back and whatever. You don't think he ever went anywhere. But this offensive line that had been struggling and the decision to go into the pistol formation and just leave Peyton Manning in the shotgun, I think, has worked out pretty well. A little kneel down to end the first half. So 
Broncos trying to go to 3 and 0. Lions trying to avoid going to 0 and 3. It's halftime. Denver leads by a score of 14 to 6, and they'll get the ball to start the third. Coming up next, we're at a halftime. Right after these messages from your NBC students. And a nod to Hispanic Heritage Month. The Broncos to Denver 14. Leonis to Detroit 6. Eight point game and the buzz. You saw the highlights. Manning the 45 yard TD pass at the end of the half. His first completion of over 20 yards in their two and a half games thus far. Stafford had that one good drive, overall 111 yards, and an interception. He's been on the ground twice. And a look at the two outstanding receivers. Of course, Thomas with that big play at the end. And Johnson, a key factor in Detroit's touchdown drive. Sunday night in Michigan's largest city, 14-6. Denver will get the ball with Sam Martin to kick it off. What a call on fourth and one, huh? I know. See it before, and when you least expect it, it comes up with a little magic. I, I thought he just looked much more aggressive throwing the ball in the first half than what I've seen, especially when he was under center earlier this year. All right, so Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya. Second half begins with a touchback. And Peyton's first half, Chris. Yeah, let's just take a look. I mean, you, you saw some aggressiveness, even down to, like, the grimace on his face. He was trying to throw fastballs tonight. And anytime Peyton Manning can get that body weight moving forward, he really doesn't have problems making these kind of throws. And then here's the one at the end. He knew his guy was going to win the jump ball, and so he gave him a chance to do that. But for Peyton Manning, believe me, he hears it all. He knows. He does. <laughs> He's got it. He knows everybody's scared, but this pistol might be the answer. From the 20. Big give, and then catch made by Thomas, who brings his way for a gain of eight. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Gary Kubiak told me at halftime that he's happy so far with the pistol because he can stay true to his running philosophy, and at the same time, Peyton Manning is comfortable in the shotgun. One problem, running back Juwan Thompson is out with a neck injury, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. So Thompson out, but Anderson is back in. And Hillman, who scored the touchdown, is the other back. Manning on a roll, and nobody opens, so he just throws it into the bench with a flag on the play. Well, there's no doubt the bootleg's a big part of Gary Kubiak's offense. It looks a little different when Peyton runs it than Joe Flacco and some others. Prior to the pass, holding, number 50, defense. It's a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Little linebacker, Travis Lewis. Really need something big defensively out of the Lions here. And, you know, they just don't have that star that you have to worry about anymore the way they had it on this team last year. There's nobody really to double team. They hope Nada becomes that inside. Maybe Ziggy Ansa, But neither one of them quite the dominant player that you have to pay that much attention to. And minus DeAndre Levy, the linebacker, all three games this season. He's hurt. Ronnie Hillman takes the ball up to the 36-yard line. Yeah, and Levy was that X factor, if you will. And um, he was the guy that when talking to Glover Quinn, he said, you know, he would just explode and make plays, sort of like a Troy Polamalu kind of guy that it wasn't ad-libbing or, uh, you know, going against the plan, but occasionally he would shoot in the backfield and make a tackle for a loss or a sack or a big interception, and he got the offense off rhythm, and we just don't have that right now. And we need him back sooner than later. Next week they go to Seattle. And this is Thomas. And he gets taken down. That uh, three yards shy of the first down by Ansa. Hey, Ansa, watch him. He's going to take the helmet off of hmm. Sambrilo first. That's a shot. And then hustles back. You know, here was a guy that from Ghana that came out and to BYU and he walked on. He wanted to play basketball. That didn't work out. Walked on the track team. That didn't work out. And they said, why don't you try football? Now here he is, one of the stars in the National Football League. Third down and five. Back out of the blitz. 
And then it's Thomas, and he's going to reach for it. And is he down before the ball came loose? They're going to rule it at the moment. They are he is down. He's down at the 41. The first official there, that's Diggs, who takes the ball into the end zone. But the official at the end of the play is saying this is down at the 41-yard line. And this is going to be close. He lands on the defender. On Mathis. Where is he down? It is challengeable. I don't see anything down. The hand can be down. That does not put you down. You've got to get a forearm, a wrist. I don't think we even got a butt on this one. They're going to they have to challenge it. Denver's trying to get his punt group out there before Caldwell can challenge it. And I think Demarius Thomas had some idea too. He got up and started chasing it. Now, they're not going to allow the return, but the recovery is a different thing. That was like slow motion. He was rolling over the top of Mathis. I think uh, Caldwell might have been thinking, okay, you know, er everything is reviewed anyway. Detroit is challenging on the field as well as But it wasn't a turnover. That's what he's trying to get out of it. So he has right. to challenge this right now. And he will, and he will probably win it. Here's Triplett. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The runner, the player, player, had not was dropped down by contact and the ball came loose. It was recovered by Detroit at the 29-yard line. It'll be Detroit's ball, first and 10 at the 29. We set the game clock for 13 minutes. Well, the crowd is booing. They thought it should be a touchdown, but that's the rule. The rule is if he, it's a fumble, and that's what they call it. He's reaching for the first down, doesn't get it, lands on Mathis, ball is loose, and then the rule says you, you get it from the point of recovery. Right. So there's, there's Diggs at the 29-yard line, and that's why they will take it there. The crowd is booing. They thought he should be given the touchdown. Yeah, and the reason for that, obviously one official thought that the play was dead, so he blows his whistle, so they don't want him to be able to run in, but they still are going to allow the recovery. 13 minutes on the game clock, please. Put six seconds back on it. You said they needed a big defensive play. There it is. There you go. Now they need to do something with it. Right. Lions at the 29-yard line. And Stafford. Ooh, he slides and he gets really hot. And that's going to draw a flag. That's Sylvester Williams. And that's going to cost him 15. Really good job in the secondary. That was going to end up a coverage sack there. And then got a gift. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 92 of the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. First of all, late hit, you slide, you're protected at that point, and then comes the helmet, and then you're going to see Eric Ebron, the little out and up, but T.J. Ward was not fooled, and on the backside of Keep Tlaib had Calvin Johnson close enough and undercut that one, so he had to pull it down, but they still catch a break. It's a big game for the Lions, you know, you forget yeah. they've got to get off that 0-2, they're playing at home. This is one of those games you hope your quarterback is mature enough to win one of these now at home. On the road at Seattle next week. Looking going for all likelihood. Instead of one and two after tonight is Joy Bell. Picks up a couple. We go to Michelle. Well, Jim Caldwell told me at halftime, in spite of running for just 12 yards in the first half, they will not shy away from their rushing attack. He said the run game's dirty work, and he expects some cracks to open up. Also, starting right guard Larry Warford is probable with an ankle injury. He has been on the sideline quite a bit, Al. All right, Michelle, and he's graded out quite well in the first two games this season. Well, They'll miss him second down and seven. Abdullah is the running back. Stafford flings it. 
to Johnson. Johnson very close to picking up a first down. Talib is there, and that will move the chains and make it first down and goal. I'll tell you, Wade Phillips is not afraid. Look at this. There aren't many times that anybody plays that guy just one on one on the outside. They have that kind of faith in Akib Talib. But we've seen games. Remember the Saints game? <laughs> Last year, a couple years ago, they put two guys like it was a punt cover kind of a thing out there on Calvin Johnson. From the six. Through the middle. Taking it to the two of Dula, a flag. Holding 72 offense. 10 yard penalty. Still first down. Yeah, they had to reshuffle this offensive line in here. Like Larry Warford got hit. Lakin Tomlinson right here. And if I were to tell you a Duke guard was the ACC athlete of the year, you would think, yeah, Mike Krzyzewski has great guards there, you know? But it was Lakin Tomlinson who was played guard for the football team and ACC overall athlete of the year. Pretty impressive. The number one draft choice. The play clock is a two. He just do get it away. It is caught on the run by Abdullah for the touchdown. Just before they get to Stafford, Abdullah is able to take the pass on the run. Stafford looking over to the bench saying, we're going for two to try to tie the game. Theo Riddick got it close the first time. Now the other back, Amir Abdullah, coming out of the backfield. Here he comes with this little thing. We see Darren Sproles do it all the time. And I tell you, Brandon Marshall, Danny Trevathan, they're no joke as far as coverage guys inside at linebacker. But these two backs, we'll see if they keep exploiting that matchup. It's working well. Well, Prater had that extra point blocked. Michelle reported they also had a little yeah. food poisoning. So even though there's a ton of time left in the game, they're going to go for two here. Oregon, Oregon! Now they're shifting out the help against Calvin Johnson. He the Joy Bell, and he will not come close. T.J. Ward stuffs him at the line of scrimmage. So they settle for six. We have 10.51 to go in the third. They do cash in on the turnover, though, to make it a two-point game at Ford Field in Detroit. Fifty coming your way from the Bay Area in February. Teams never to appear in the Super Bowl. Lions, Browns, you saw those, the Jaguars, the Texans. Most seasons since the last championship game appearance. Well, the Cubs, may, they're going to the playoffs, so who knows? Sacramento Kings, not likely. Detroit, 57 years. Toronto Maple Leafs in the NHL. Martha Firestone Ford, the widow of William Clay Ford, a terrific man who owned this team for so many years. They last won a championship here in 1957. The drought. And very little postseason success over the last few years. Now for all that's gone wrong for this offense and Peyton Manning, they come in here and get a second road win against a good team. Kansas City last week and come back at Detroit. You know this team's going to get better. They're definitely better tonight than they've been the first two, so somebody has to catch them early. From the 20-yard line, C.J. Anderson. He's the running back behind Manning. And Peyton dancing, fires over the middle, caught. That's a gain of 15 yards. Emmanuel Sanders. Just one little addendum to that note we had. By the way, the Cubs, of course, have been in Chicago all those years. Detroit's been here, uh, even though they started in, in Portsmouth, Ohio. Maple Leafs are there. The Sacramento Kings were, the Rochester Royals, the Cincinnati Royals, went to Kansas City, and then Sacramento. In case, you, in case you're wondering. I can now go to bed and sleep peacefully tonight. <laughs> yes, you can. Thank you. From the 35-yard line, first down. And that's dropped. 
Demarius Thomas right there over the middle. Couldn't hang on. Second down and 10. This is just the look of Peyton Manning here. I didn't think he ever, when he was under center dropping back, looked this aggressive throwing the ball. He's been doing this for a long time. Now he's going to take a little hitch step back up into the throw. But he just looks comfortable. He never looked to me, even though he did it a lot, he did it in college, he did it early in the NFL, all those things. At 39, it just didn't look right when he was going back from under center trying to throw the ball and step up. I, I just didn't feel like Peyton Manning throwing the ball. Again, Thomas, and he gets a nice block. And Demarius Thomas is thrust out of bounds just across the 50-yard line, first down. Well, and Demarius Thomas, how many of these have we seen on Sunday Night Football where they just get him the football and he goes 80 yards with it? We've seen several of them. He's a monster out there. It's hard to believe that he and Calvin Johnson were at the same school. And Calvin, Georgia Tech, said, you know, I, I think I did have a little something to do with the fact that Demarius came there. said he was much bigger then, though. I thought he was a tight end when I first met him. A nice block there from Jordan Norwood. Andre Corwell now comes in Thomas out for the moment. Nine and a half to go in the third. Ball handed off to Anderson. Eight of four. To the 44 into the flag. Holding. 74 offense. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. That's their top draft choice. Sam Brolo oh, came out of Colorado. Sam Brilo came out of Colorado State. And he's the guy who's called for it. Yeah, he just he tried to make that reach block. And I think, you know, linemen get so used to being able to get away with holds, especially inside. Every once in a while, they just get caught. Watch him try and reach here. He's just going to sort of hook the arm there. Jason Jones, I think it was. First and 20. Hillman is the running back. Give it to him on a draw. Gain of a couple. Second down and 18. You know, Ronnie Hillman's not really one of those guys that if you're going to, you know, go power running and all that sort of stuff, that he's going to have a, a big day. But Ronnie Hillman in this kind of offense where you're going to throw it, throw it, throw it, and then hand off a draw, a screen, flare. He's a 195-pound quick back. The other two are more of the 225-pound variety. Think he's scaring anybody with that uh, mouth guard? <laughs> right. Well, here comes Halloween. Second down and 18. Manning, good protection again. And the catch is made at the 49 by Norwood. Every kid in Denver is going to have one of those on October 31st. Well, not every kid, but, you know, a few kids. Look at that. <laughs> and if you're wondering, those are the holes that you breathe through right there. Mm -hmm. I never had one of those. I didn't. That was old school. One of those flopping on my face mask and stuff. Holly's going to buy one for you. <laughs> Third and 13. Pressure. And he hangs in. Pass incomplete. Busted up. Intended for the tight end. Daniels. Josh Bynes, the linebacker, breaks it up. You know, Josh Bynes has really done a pretty nice job in there. He's been asked to do a lot of different things now and actually was the signal caller. And that is good coverage right there. Tullick had taken a turn to hear Whitehead was a signal caller. Levy had taken a shot at it, but he sort of settled. So the Lions down by a deuce get the ball back mid-third. Chase with the NASCAR playoffs is on NBCSN live from Dover next Sunday at 1.30 Eastern time. Three Eastern on Saturday the Xfinity Series on NBCSN. <laughs> that didn't come right off the assembly line. I don't think so. I mean, you're not going to see that at Dover either. Do you ever have one of those cars that you could actually work on? I open the hood every once in a while. I go, how in the heck could anybody ever work on these things? I did 50 auto races at ABC. I don't know what a carburetor is. <laughs> you could pull it off in those days. Kill, 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 kill. Right, Detroit has it at the 14-yard line. First down. And 
They start with a two yard gain by Joy Bell. Well, over the past year, clearly, Chris Harris and Aqib Tlaib, two of the absolute best. Look at this. Over the past year, no touchdowns, just four. Look at these quarterback ratings 49, 61. Two top seven corners, and they're both on the same team. And you combine that with what they're doing pressure wise with Demarcus Ware and Von Miller off the edge. Dynamic pair to deal with on the back end. Pro football focus bringing in the go. Numbers. Second down and nine from the 15 yard line. And turning around is Golden Tate to make the catch and then turn it into a big game. Golden Tate, great grab. Avoids the tackles. Ebron helps lead the way, and they have a first down in midfield. That is no surprise right there. Golden Tate last year led the National Football League with most yards after the catch. He was a high school running back. I want to say he had like 23 touchdowns, something like that, in high school. And when he gets his hands on the ball, very difficult to bring him down. 99 catches last year, a lot of injuries to Calvin Johnson, and he stepped up and took him to the playoffs. Gain of 33 from the 48 now. It was Abdullah around the corner. A tough running gain of seven for the Nebraska rookie. Here's been the feature matchup tonight. Akeem Tlaib, Calvin Johnson, and they have been going at it. Tlaib taking this on without a lot of help. Now occasionally, like, we're running underneath that one. He's had a little bit. But you have to give them a lot of credit. There are only a handful of corners in the NFL that any defensive coordinator has the guts to match up one-on-one -on -one against Calvin Johnson. And it's been a good show all night. Abdullah got nine, makes it second down and one from the 43-yard line. Joyke Bell tackled at the line of scrimmage. Third and short. Now there's Brandon Marshall. You know, Brandon Marshall and Danny Trevathan each have had years in which they've led this team in tackles, and they just really have never been on the field together much because of injuries or whatever. But Brandon Marshall, I remember they were saying that John Fox told us he was on the, the practice squad and playing against the offense every day, and basically the, his own players came up and said, get him off of here, get him out on the field playing some defense. That's Tim Wright. 54! At the top Fuel. of the screen. That's a key place for the Patriots a couple years ago, and that's a first down as the pass is caught by Golden Tate. Two to 35 is a penalty marker. Was a third and one, and the Lions are retreating. Pass interference, offense number 85. The 10 yard penalty, still third down. Eric Eber on the tight end, pleading his case. Well, this kind of looks like offensive pass interference. I think Bradley Roby's going to agree. Just <laughs> knocks him straight over. Now, if all that happens within one yard of the line of scrimmage, it's sort of uh, they wave it all off, but that was two or three yards down the field. Third down and 11. It's knocked away, and then it somehow winds back up in his arms. And DeMarcus Ware is right there to prevent any advance, and the Lions will have to punt. Hey, that was a good job blocking by Travis Swanson inside, but <laughs> look at Antonio Smith, the veteran, get up and make that play, and then Stafford came down with it. Probably wishes he hadn't. Reminds you, Brett Favre's initial completion in the NFL threw it to himself. That counts as a completion. Well, that's probably why he caught it. <laughs> Martin's kick. And going for the fair catch, letting it go. And the Lions are going to pin him deep as it's down by Nevin Lawson at the six-yard line. Never mind. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By the Kia Sorento, the perfect getaway vehicle. By Keen Crisp, Coors Light, and by U.S. Bank.
top-ranked teams in the state of Michigan that yesterday. Martin Luther King High School be cast up in overtime. And the kids from Detroit King are on hand for tonight's game. Let it go. Jets as Denver takes over at the 8. And Manning starts with the flip. Caught by Daniels. And Daniels is a tough runner. And he's not the yard shot. You know, Chris, John Fox had a lot of success. I mean, how many coaches leave with a 46 and 18 four year record? Playoffs all four years. But John Elway pretty much felt that John was a great turnaround specialist. He said, I wanted to go down kicking and screaming because their last two games, the Super Bowl two years ago and the playoff game last year, they were out of both of them and never in either game. And I think that really wore on Elway. Yeah, for John Elway, only one thing matters, and he lost enough Super Bowls, and I know that feeling, too, that you win or you just didn't have a good year. That's just the way John Elway is. That's Anderson picking up a first down, and, you know, they had a ton of success, but, boy, you know, you get blown out in the Super Bowl, you get blown out last year. You take a look at the— That was unbelievable. Well, yeah, Fox and Harbaugh, who— who, of course, is uh, coaching uh, down the block in Ann Arbor and led his team to a, a romp over Brigham Young yesterday. Uh, every team I've ever seen Jim Harbaugh coach, after a month, they are one of the most physical teams I've seen. And Manning is under duress and just goes down, and that's Devin Taylor who was able to burst through. It's credit for the sack. Well, that was, they're going to... Try and come up with Benny Fowler down in the field, and there's Darius Slay with just perfect coverage. And finally, somebody else with a sack here, just no match on the outside. I believe that was Owen Daniels trying to make that block, and Devin Taylor got the chance over Philip Hunt tonight, and he delivered. Second down and 21 from the 11. Deep drop. Manning has time. Manning deep downfield, and that is caught by Emmanuel Sanders at the 34-yard line. How's that for a deep out? Somewhere in the back of Peyton Manning's mind, he's saying, you happy now? <laughs> that is a 20-yard deep comeback out route that he threw on the exact spot. And did that thing move at all? Here we go. The challenge is out. There the ball bobbled, and I think they're going to call that incomplete. So Sanders juggling it. Appeared to get down inbounds, but of course you got to maintain control all the way through. Detroit has challenged the ruling on the field as a completing catch at the sideline. Once again, under the hood goes Jeff Triplett. Rolling on the field, completed pass. We think it's going to get overturned, and in fact it is because the teams are now moving back. So there goes that pass. After the review, the rolling on the field is changed. The receiver bobbled the ball as he was on the, on the ground, sliding out of bounds. The ball came loose. It is an incomplete pass. It will be third down. And the other thing that he didn't say, we we'll look at it again. That's two challenges, one by Detroit. It's going to be third and 21. If you win two challenges, you get a third. I think Trumpet's trying to tell the crowd that right now, but they don't care. They're just happy to see Denver backing up. Well, we'd like to welcome the crowd to the football game tonight. Right. It's the first time we've heard them in full throat. They understand full well the significance of that call to make this third down and a chance for great field position for the Lions. So Jim Caldwell, second year here. Of course, he coached Peyton Manning as a head coach and an assistant coach for many seasons under Tony Dungy at Indy, and then Manning is going to get the pass away to Jordan Norwood, 
and he gets ripped from behind in the 29 yard line but he get him well out of the shadow of the goal post and giving the punter Colquitt a lot of extra room here. It looked like a Matthew Stafford pass there. Mm -hmm. Just dead sidearm across his body and I'll tell you, Jordan Norwood came close. At least got him out of the hole. Came within four yards of it. And Colquitt now with the line of scrimmage up at the 27-yard line. T.J. Jones back to receive for Detroit. It's a line drive and low kick and a bounce and take a real good Denver hop. So not a very artistic punt, but a very productive one nonetheless on a 50 yards. Blind spot. Monday's number one new drama and critics give it five stars. Don't miss the show everyone is talking about. Blind spot tomorrow right here on NBC. That was a big show. I tell you, there are people excited about that yeah. one. Yeah. No. A minute to go in the third quarter. Start this drive with a flag. And it's Bell coming around the outside. Brandon Marshall is there. Full start here. It's going to be penalty number seven on Detroit. Denver also has seven. Interesting call here. I'm going to decline it. Illegal well. formation. Offense. Number 85 covered up. Number 77. The penalty is declined. It'll be second down. Right, they'll take the play. Which was no game. Well, there you go with uh, Manning, who was drafted first in '98. Caldwell came with Dungy when Tony went from Tampa to Indianapolis, and then when Tony retired after the 08 campaign, Caldwell took over as the head coach. And Jim Caldwell, you recall, is, is a rookie head coach, won his first 14 games, wound up 14 and two, and they went to the Super Bowl where they lost to the Saints. And that's caught now by Ebron. And Ebron gets taken down at the 26. Of course, uh, mutual admiration society with Caldwell and Peyton Manning. Very collegial before the game tonight. Yeah, I asked Jim Caldwell, is it still weird coaching against them? And of course, with the Ravens, they played quite a few games together. He said, but it is strange. A guy that you've cheered for and tried to help your whole life, all of a sudden you're scheming ways to knock him around, <laughs> try and make him look as bad as you possibly can. End of the third, it's a two-point game in Sunday night football from Detroit. Back after this. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeVoya. Air coverage tonight provided by Geico. Yep, that's the old Silver Dome. The roof is gone. What you want? The house that Chris Collinsworth destroyed. Yeah, I as, did destroy that. As a rookie, he played with the Cincinnati Bengals in there. That's where Bill Walsh won his first Super Bowl. And that's what it looks like. Today. Some guy named Joe Montana went crazy. It's like the Roman Coliseum. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Meanwhile, third and six. Big play, and they do convert to start the fourth quarter on a pass to Calvin Johnson, tackled by Talib. Just the strength of Calvin Johnson here. Keep Talib as a big guy himself. But Calvin Johnson has a way of just running through people and getting some separation. That was a big play there. That has been a lot of fun to watch tonight. The hottest corner going against Calvin Johnson, one of the all-time great receivers. They have been putting on a show. Johnson seven grabs tonight. 72 yards, the longest of which one for 25. Stafford, deep drop, steps away. Down the sideline, there's contact, and there are no flags intended there for Ebron. T.J. Ward, strong safety. Covering. Ebron makes a nice play, and so did Matthew Stafford. He underthrew this one, and he just didn't catch the football. He had more problems with drops last year than this, but I thought that was one he should have made. Yep. 
I'll tell you, they're doing a decent job, though, on the outside. I, I think that's Ladrian Waddle now playing out there at tackle. Von Miller hasn't shown up much so far. What's the kill? What's the kill? Haven't called his name since early in the game. Second and ten. Now he comes around the corner, but Stafford unleashes it. And that's incomplete. The crowd, of course, wants a flag on every play. So does Stafford. Roby was the defender. It'll be third down and ten. Definitely a lot of contact going down the field. Sometimes the receiver has to initiate a little bit to draw the flag. Just didn't quite fight back through the ball maybe enough in the eyes of the officials. Lance Moore, the intended receiver, now it's third down and ten. Now's when you have to really pay attention to these pass rushers. They're going to spread it out. You better throw it fast, Matthew Stafford. They clock to two. Four-man rush. Stafford throws. And that's broken up. Intended for Johnson. And Tlaib wins that battle. So three incomplete passes. Miller put the heat on on Stafford that time. Fourth down. Well, here comes Miller off the edge. And that was about as good as he could do. But this is interesting because this is where Aqib Tlaib knew in that spread formation that Stafford was going to have to throw it quick and he sat on that route. You could see he thought he had an interception on that one. He knew because of the formation there was no way for him to throw that ball deep down the field. Breaks it up and here's Martin's kick. Fielded at the 18 by Emmanuel Sanders. And he's taken down at the 24 yard line by Travis Lewis. Two point game Denver ball. The night football brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes to save you 50% on car insurance. By StubHub, let your fan out. By Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. And by Wendy's. That's Joey Bell, who grew up in Michigan, local elementary school on Friday. Two of the students participating in a blue out. Joey Bell. I know we all tend to focus when players make mistakes in this league, but there are a lot of good guys in this league, too. Takes the snap right here. You know that Ronnie Hillman. He's around the corner up to the 29-yard line. So Rilo came up holding his elbow. It almost looked like their wrist. Favoring it. Shoulder. Left tackle. Well, you certainly have got to keep an eye on that now because, you know, those offensive linemen, they've got to extend their arms and pass protection and... We'll watch. Second down and five. And Manning thinks it'll be encroachment. Alote Nata came across the line. Give Sam Brilo an extra few seconds to uh, help recover. From whatever it is that ails him. Now we have another conference here as the who's guilty. And you can tell by that reaction. Fight start. Offense. Number 61. The five yard penalty still second down. It's Matt Paradis, the center. See what he does here. They're going to do the tap. You got me on that one. Oh, yeah. You got me. Didn't see it. Eight penalties against the Broncos. 14 total in the game. Accepted. Second and 10. Manning stepping up to avoid the heat. Caught 30 yard line. Emmanuel Sanders gets bent back. Tullock. Makes the tackle. That's going to make it third down and four for Denver. Well, they're sort of tearing up the middle of the field here for the last quarter or so. And this is when, you know, Peyton Manning intentionally completed that short one to set up this third and five. And I'll tell you, we're getting down to that point in the game now where it's going to be decided by some of these third and fives. Number three out of nine on third down. Holman is the back. Play clock at three. 
And Manning's going to take a timeout. Play is too important here. They're messed up. Timeout. Denver, they're first. In terms of setting up. Well, each team, each team was trying to establish a rushing game, and neither has been able to do it. Denver yards per carry, 2.8 against Baltimore week 1, 2.8 last Thursday against KC, 2.4 tonight. Yeah, and it really, they had a big dinner the other night on offense to talk about it, and Demarius Thomas stood up and he said, Peyton Manning, do you know that you're the quarterback of the 32nd ranked offense in the National Football League? And Peyton didn't believe it. He said, no way. And so he, you know, goes to Google on his phone or whatever and looks up and sure enough, and they all started laughing at him, but no laughing matter right now. They need a little of that offense. And then he said, we're 2-0. Third and four after the timeout. Manny dumps it off in the flat, juggled, caught, and trying to get the first down. Now is Ronnie Hillman. Where is he out of bounds? It appears to be a little short of the first. Josh Bynes knocked him out of bounds. That little bobble may have cost him the first down. He had to just spend a minute to catch it. Good hustle by Bynes getting over there. That was a tough mark, but one that went very favorably for the Lions. Boy, Bynes had a long way to go to run him down across that formation. So at the 33, fourth and one, Colquitt averaging 41 yards per boot tonight. This will be his fifth punt. T.J. Jones back to receive it. Jones has room. T.J. Jones is going to get tackled up at the 45-yard line. So good run back. Virgil Green makes the stop there. And with 11 and a half to go in regulation, Detroit has the ball down by two. Don't miss any regular season NFL game on NFL Game Pass. You can listen live to game day audio or replay the games on demand. NFL.com slash game pass is your entry point. Okay, 11 and a half to go. Two point Denver lead. Detroit with the ball at the 45 after a good return of 28 yards by TJ Jones. Throw over the middle. And next point, it's a game of six to the 49. Golden Tate. You know, Jim Caldwell has been around some Super Bowl winning quarterbacks over the years, and he feels like the Matthew Stafford now is right in his prime. He's seen Peyton Manning at about year five, Joe Flacco about year five, even Brad Johnson. And this is the moment, honestly, where Matthew Stafford is supposed to step up and beat Peyton Manning, a 39-year-old quarterback. This is, you're at home, you're supposed to win this game right now. He is right in the sweet spot of his career. Johnson is main man, and Johnson gets tackled, but he picks up the first down. Tlaib makes the stop, first down. I'll tell you, though, I've been impressed with Stafford tonight in the fact that he knew he was going to be under siege. He knew he was going to have to get the football out of his hand. And in many ways, the quarterback has to protect the offensive line. You think about it the other way, but he couldn't sit back there and hold the ball with these monsters coming after him. He's, he has to do it without a running game. They can't get anything going on the ground tonight. 16 rushes, 25 yards. It's a yard and a half per rush. Stafford. Under pressure, loses the ball, has it stripped. Shaquille Barrett is the guy who is able to get it, extract it, and Denver is going to come up with a recovery. Now, so, Stafford's going to say he was down. Of course, the Broncos are already running off the field. Stafford's going to say he was throwing it. He was throwing it, and it should be incomplete. So, they'll sort this one out. There's a turnover. They'll look at it again. Mark coming forward. We'll see. They're looking at this thing. This is where you're really splitting hairs on this thing. There's no such thing as the old tuck rule. But what happens here is that they contend that Stafford was bringing his 
arm back or his hand back toward his body. Thus, it is a fumble. Instead of the arm going forward, where it could have been ruled as a forward pass. Crowd, of course, hates it. Denver takes over on the turnover, has the ball at the 49-yard line. Andy Dalton had a play very close to that a week ago, and it was ruled incomplete. Manning throws, and that's a first down, and that's Benny Fowler, who's had himself a very nice night. First year wide receiver out of Michigan State. Okay, is this ball coming down towards his body, or is he attempting to throw it? He's hit as it's going back, but he doesn't lose control until it's coming forward. Uh, there's a lot of subjectivity. If you're saying he was bringing that back down to his body and not trying to throw it, I, I cannot wait to hear the explanation of why that's different than the Andy Dalton play. Yeah, and that's why they that's why they ruled it a fumble. You tell me. The ball is at the 36-yard line. Anderson. <laughs> the 33 yard line so each team now with two turnovers tonight boy there have been a lot of challenges in this game hasn't there I mean it seems like every play is just examined down frame by frame as we go through this and sometimes seasons and sometimes jobs are decided by those frames very much a part of today's NFL a long time since I saw a coach win both challenges and get a third. Caldwell is in that position right now. He's got one more in his pocket if he needs it. Second down and eight. And then Manny throws and Thomas makes the catch and it's going to be for a loss. Machine Mathis, longtime Jacksonville Jaguar, makes the tackle. Machine Mathis, an uh, interesting guy, had. 31 interceptions and pros had 31 interceptions in college and where's number 31? What would Ben Scully say about that? <laughs> 31s are wild. Pull up a chair. Third down and nine. <laughs> Snap it at one on the play clock. Peyton dancing, feeling the pressure drop. Thomas again with a drop here. That's edible. Covering on the play. It's going to make it fourth down. And you would be looking at a 53-yard field goal, which certainly is within McManus's range. However, the downside is if he misses it, Detroit's going to get the ball down by two points at their own 43-yard line. Boy, what a great stand, though, by Terrell Austin's bunch on that one to get that turnover and then to hold them to a long field goal about as good as you could ask. Colquitt to hold it. McManus with a big leg. He got a flag. And that kick is going to be no good. Let's see about the call. It's a fourth down and nine. And it was one of the back judges that made the call. I don't think it's anybody offsides, anything like that. Too many men on the field? Possibly. Oh, on the flick. And you can tell by Detroit's reaction, I think it's, it's against them. If it is and it's a five-yard penalty, it would be fourth down and four. Assuming it's a five-yarder. Here's Triple. Illegal formation defense. Oh, there were seven boy, they men got too on the many side guys. of the, the ball. And it's a five-yard penalty. It'll still be fourth down. You got to go six and five. Here's the problem. They've made rules now, so you can't overload one side. Here's the official, and he's saying you can't do that one. And that is a huge mistake. So now you get a reload. Yep. Too many men on one side. Joe Marciano is the special teams coach. So what? So now you've got a 48-yard attempt. McManus gets a mulligan. Hey, that's wind, expensive. Yeah, it winds up with a par. All right, so a 48-yarder is good to make it 17-12 with 7.50 to go. Been an odd game. Playing it in fits and starts. And Denver has a five-point lead with 7.50 remaining in regulation. That was big. Huge. Instead of 
Detroit getting the ball at the 45 down by two. Most likely they'll start from the 20 down by five and that's where this drive will begin for Matthew Stafford. So as Triplett said you can't have seven guys on one side. Here comes Slay. And we'll go back and take a look at who's who here. So here he is coming walking in here on the edge. And there's the special teams coach Marciano going, what are you doing? And I think he's sailing through Slade. He can't do that. You know, you try and come down there, you try and bluff, you try and make a play, and there are a lot of there are more special team rules than anything. The pass is caught by Theo Riddick. That's a gain of seven. Second down and three. Brandon Marshall made the stop. Yeah, we've seen them have success throughout the course of this game with that move by isolating those running backs on the inside linebackers, and they just keep flip-flopping those two backs, Theo Riddick and Amir Abdullah, hey, trip! and they're both having success. Here is Abdullah as the running back. Give it to him. They, they just can't get anything going on the ground. Darian Stewart comes up to make the tackle. Now you've got a big third down and one coming up. 17 rushes, 27 ground yards for the Lions. That was an interesting defensive call there. They flip-flopped their safeties. So they're going to bring down and here based on something with the formation, and it ends up Darian Stewart, the safety that came down, made that play. Bell seeking the first down. Very, very close. The nose of the ball is on the 30. He has it, and he does. First down. I can't remember a game where it's been more like inches and, and frames and milliseconds of time that have decided this game. Von Miller came down and squeezed that one hard and looked like, was that Brandon Marshall just sort of slipped? Or whatever when he saw Lake and Tomlinson. Clock going down to six minutes remaining. And he's moving on the right side of the Lions line. That was Waddle. Trying to contend that. Uh, start. Number 66, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Contending it's not his fault, but it was. So it's uh, first down and 15. Those guys, they want every advantage they can. And the great tackles, you can see generally they move first. When you're at home, you obviously have the advantage. You can actually hear the snap count. And when you're going against Von Miller, sometimes you have to anticipate it and got caught that time. Stafford under pressure again, and it goes right through the hands of Abdullah. Second and 15 for Detroit. Now they were trying that same play again, that little arrow route back inside. He just got lost. He couldn't find it behind his own guys. I think that was Manny Ramirez right in front of him. Well, you hey. saw Joe Lombardi calling in the play, and there's Wade Phillips signaling to the defense. Second and 15. Where and Miller ready to put the heat on from the outside. Stafford steps up, throws, caught on the run, and into Denver territory goes Ebron. Big first down with 520 remaining, 29 yards. David Bruton in coverage right here. This is just perfectly thrown by Matthew Stafford, and way to hang in there. He was under pressure. I think it was Von Miller right in his face. He thought he was going to take a shot. That's the kind of big-time play you need out of Eric Ebron. At the Denver 46-yard line. On the ground again. Nothing. Joey Bell gain a one. Second to nine. You know, it, it's sort of that catch-22. They know that they have opportunities with Calvin Johnson being in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. But the other thing that Joe Lombardi was talking about is I can't let him force me completely out of the run. I know I have to stay with it 
but it just has not done much of anything here tonight. Five oh, five oh. Yard and a half per carry. Second down and nine. Pressure. Screen set up, but busted up by the Broncos over the middle. Brandon Marshall makes the tackle. Joy Bell with the reception. Third down and long. Back at the 48-yard line. Third and 12, and the next snap is under the four-minute mark. Let's see if they help on the outside guys, and then it really becomes whether or not these inside pressure guys, Malik Jackson, haven't heard him much tonight. And he is a good pass rusher inside. Four-man rush. Stanford fires, tipped, and intercepted. Bruton makes the interception, and Denver has a huge turnover. So Bruton beaten over the middle by the tight end Ebron on the 29-yarder atones with the pick. There he is. Watch David Bruton just playing the eyes of the quarterback Matthew Stafford. Look at that. That's the difference between having a safety in there and a linebacker in there. Linebackers don't make that play. A safety? Absolutely. And that is the second time David Bruton's made a huge play on the game-winning interception by Darian Stewart in the opener. It was Bruton who tipped the ball away. And a forced fumble last week in the game against Kansas City. Big play Bruton. C.J. Anderson is the running back. Now they can begin to play a little clock ball. They can make sure he stayed in bounds. Diggs makes the tackle. Detroit has all of its timeouts. I don't think Matthew Stafford can believe it. They take one the, here to the Lions. Watch the middle linebacker come all the way across there and make that play. And that was Calvin Johnson running up the seam. And I think Matthew Stafford, when he threw that one, was thinking Calvin Johnson might score. What a play. <laughs> wow, that's, yeah. Bill <laughs> Kohler over there. About as emotional a guy as there is in this league. What a play. Lions turning it over three times tonight. Five turnovers in the game. A ton of challenges. Plenty of penalties. And it's a five-point game. Second down and eight for Denver at the 49. Betsy Hedebo showing blitz off the edge down here. Manning going deep, jump ball, and somehow Sanders comes away with it over Darius Slay. Boy, Slay having a night to forget. Oh, my gosh, what a play. Emmanuel Sanders, not that big a guy, just went up and ripped it away. That is fan. We're seeing some football plays right now. I think Slay had the front half of the ball, and... It was Sanders with the back half, and he pulled it right out. Look, both of them really have the ball right there, and Sanders just pulls it out of his hands. Huge. All Slay can do is shake his head in frustration. He was beaten on that pass to Thomas at the end of the first half. Responsible for the field goal snafu. Played it well, but just gets beaten on the play, and now Denver takes a timeout. Didn't you love the story that Emmanuel Sanders told us last night that when he was a kid growing up, if your last name was Sanders, he was cheering for you. So Deion Sanders, that was his, his favorite player. And of course, Barry Sanders around here, and those two guys would have been plenty proud of that one. He said, well, if that, those two guys named Sanders can play in the NFL, why can't I? Lions honored the late Charlie Sanders. At halftime tonight in the ceremony. There's his name on the Ring of Honor. His favorite, his favorite golfer was Doug Sanders. Not only. Just, just don't, don't get into chicken and all. <laughs> just, okay. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> I'm going nowhere. That's where I'm going. So it's first and ten at the 15-yard line. Detroit can stop the clock twice plus the two-minute warning. From the pistol, Anderson to the 13-yard line. Well, it didn't cure the running game, 
by any means for the Broncos tonight. But this pistol formation sure has made Peyton Manning look more comfortable to me. Little action for those of you who have joined us a little late. Also the game, Manning's numbers. By far the, the best outing for him this season. Stafford has had his moments. He had that pass to Thomas at the end of the first half on a fourth and one. And then the Bruton interception, gigantic here. And Denver's trying to make it a two-possession lead. Detroit can hold him to a field goal. It's an eight-point game, one-possession game, and they'd have a ton of time. But first things first, they're down to one timeout. Clock will stop at the two-minute warning at second down and eight. Anderson again. Go forward to the 12 yard line, and now Detroit will take its final time out. So we are wrapping up week three here. Next week, we go to New Orleans, where the Dallas Cowboys with a big lead today. And watch that go away against Atlanta, taking on the Saints. Football night starts at 7 Eastern time, and we go to the dome there. Atlanta 3 0 under Dan Quinn. What a start! 39 to 28 and the Carolina Panthers off to a great start as well against the Saints McCown played today Breeze inactive today see about next week McCown about 310 yards in the losing effort but it's Dallas and New Orleans next week on Sunday Night Football and Matthew Stafford wants one more chance Every time they put Demarius Thomas in there in the slot, they tried to get him the ball. Third and six. Pressure. Going. Caught in the end zone by Daniels. Owen Daniels for the touchdown. So Daniels has had a few drops tonight, and he finally collects one and does it in the end zone to make it a two-possession lead. It's one of those things that will never show up on the stat page, what Peyton Manning just did right there. He knew exactly where the pressure was going to come from. He redirected his offensive line. He moves to the right, hits the winning touchdown pass over the edge. He knew better than the Detroit Lions did what they were going to do on that play. And McManus now for the extra point. So with 2.28 left and only the two-minute warning to stop the clock for Detroit, it's 24 to 12. Maiden is going to redirect his offensive line. He's going to tell them all to go that way. He's going to leave that guy unblocked. He's going to come. So what is Peyton going to do? He's going to move that way and hit the route right down here in the corner. Understood exactly what was coming for him just moved away from it and hit the winning touchdown pass. I don't know how you put that in statistics. You don't. But that's why Peyton Manning wins so many games. Mm -hmm. Owen oh, Daniels, of course, the uh, coaches love to bring guys who know their systems. And with Kubiak as the head coach in Houston, Daniels spent so many years there. Daniels was in Baltimore last year, so he just keeps following Kubiak around the country. Adapting and adjusting. That's what you do in the National Football League, and that's what the Broncos have done over this uh, three-week period. But look out. I mean, they're 3-0 and with two wins over tough teams on the road, and they're starting to feel it a little bit. They've started to figure something out here on offense. And they go home next week to face Minnesota. And then there are two road games after that at Oakland. How about the Raiders all of a sudden? Two and one. And then they're at Cleveland, are the Broncos. You look at the remaining schedule, they're going to have played half their road games in the first six games. So they're going to have, going down the stretch, 
It's going to be six home and four on the road, including two home games against Green Bay and New England on a pair of Sunday nights in November, which will be on Sunday night football. He'll dump off underneath. Riddick gets taken down. Second down and nine. On the run over the middle after the 43 yard line. That's going to take us to the two minute warning. Catch is made there by Ebron. Two minutes remaining at Ford Field. Denver 24. Detroit 12. Volkswagen post game report coming up. Michelle on the field with the stars of the game Bob, Tony, and Mike. Breaking it down, getting you caught up on NFL news, and I'm sure Mike will be talking about Ben Roethlisberger, and then a, a peek ahead at Cowboys Saints next Sunday night. Well, I think there is some news on Roethlisberger, mm -hmm. right? We're going to hear from Mike Perry at the end of the game as Theo Riddick takes the ball across the 50 to the 48 yard line. Detroit has to hustle up. Second and one. 30. It's caught over the middle. Tate fighting. Dragged down 36. First down. Clock keeps running with a minute and a half. That was interesting. You could hear guys yelling down, 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 and they were telling Tate to get on the ground. Don't let him rip that ball out. It was his own guy saying it. It's a little dump over the middle. It's incomplete. Second down. Well, if you want a little good news here for the Detroit Lions, I do think Lee Adrian Waddle coming in the game has done a pretty good, nice job out there at right tackle, and that's been the big question. But no questions about that guy anymore. I think we'll uh, he'll have a quieter week this week. He's dissecting a laboratory frog instead of a rat this week. Huh? <laughs> Second down and ten. I can't believe you did that in the old. Well, I had to. Can't pass up a free rat, can you? <laughs> it's caught in the 31-yard line by Theo Riddick. Don't leave me anything that open-ended. <laughs> I'm getting kicked out of here. How many times did you hear all week long, all week long, the Peyton Man, oh, bad arm, whatever. And it's going to be a first down getting out of bounds is Theo Riddick. So the Lions, you know, they've got that trip to Seattle next week. Ugh. Right off the bat, toughest place to, to win in the league. Then Arizona comes in, and the They're Cardinals hot. are red hot. They get Chicago in here. They get Minnesota in here, too. So the Lions played three out of their first four on the road. Then they get three at home. That game at Kansas City is really in London. We're reviewing the previous play. All right. Yeah, I think if they sort of reach the ball across the line, they'll check that. We'll check out for 30 seconds. Jeff Triplett once again After to the mic. Review, the ruling on the field has changed. The runner stuck the ball out at the 25 and a half yard line when he went out of bounds. The result is a first down, Detroit. And at the 20, there you go. 25 and an, and an eighth. Yep. So 54 seconds first down. Of course, uh, Detroit needs two touchdowns. We're not in that position where it's an 11 point game and you can kick a field goal and then an onside kick and all that. We're getting into the end zone twice. And that took four seconds off the clock on the pass to Lance Moore. You know what we have not seen out of the Lions? I don't think once this year. You remember how Matthew Stafford back in the day used to sort of scramble around a little bit and Calvin Johnson good, and they just throw it. An you know, old playground thing and just let him jump up over the top of everybody and make a play. Just haven't seen any of those, at least that I can remember this year. I need it. Joe Lombardi calls the plays. And why not have another penalty? False start. 
offense, number 66. The defensive player moved but did not get in the neutral zone. The five-yard penalty, still second down. That's the 17th penalty of the game combined. Coming into week three, 15.8 penalties were being called the first two weeks. The highest average through two weeks of any season since the 1970 merger. So if you think you're seeing more flags, you are. <laughs> Second down and 10. Ah, uh, there he goes. That's Von Miller. Finally happened. They had two early sacks tonight. And now Miller picks up one. And that's four for them. Well, there goes him. Von Miller running underneath the table contact. again. Defense, number 30. The five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Just got enough of his <laughs> foot. <laughs> so that's negated. He does not get that sack. Bruton is the guy who gets penalized. But, of course, he's been the, uh, the hero in the fourth quarter tonight. Put one more second back on the clock. Well, we're parsing the hell out of this one, aren't we? It's some Jeopardy music at this point. Second down and ten. You know, you've got to score twice, so at some point, you got to sort of throw one in the end zone here, don't you? Not sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Even Peyton Manning's going, what is going on out here? Second and ten. Stanley fling it to the outside. Taking tiny little bites here. Then Riddick is out of bounds. Third and five. I have no commentary. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's an old phrase in the business called emptying the saddlebags. Just, I just want them to go for a touchdown. Here. Yeah. Ready. Still underneath, and that's incomplete. Dribs and drabs. Fourth down. Completion percentage will look good. Yeah, you know, it's one of those games. I mean, you, you, you see games where, you know, statistics look really good, and then you got to look underneath the numbers, obviously. 31 out of 44 looks like a good night. 281. You know better. Fourth and five. And finally to the end zone, and that is incomplete. There's no flag. There's no nothing. Half a minute. Whatever remains of this crowd. I want to say it's a cascade of booze, but there aren't enough people left in Ford Field right now for a cascade. More like a light shower. Yeah. Sprinkle. That was a sprinkle. <laughs> a sprinkle. Right. Well, it was a huge loss for Detroit. And a huge win for the Denver Broncos. And a keep to leave. Let's give him a little credit. Boy, you can't ask for a much tougher assignment than he had tonight. He didn't win them all, but he ran, he won enough. Well, he held Johnson. You know, you hold Johnson to 77 on eight catches. Bruton with a big play. Turnovers were big in the game. Three takeaways for the Broncos. The Broncos go home. The Broncos go to 3 0. The Broncos be favored against Minnesota to make it 4 0. And uh, all is well in the Rockies. There are a lot of people in this game playing for Detroit that still wanted to shake Peyton Manning's hand because they know it's not yep. that many more opportunities coming around. 24 12, the final Volkswagen post game report coming up.